So what is the Green Silk Road? I came across a map. Actually it's two maps. One of long ago, a couple of hundred years, and one of the current um, state of affairs. And it's about tree cover and forest cover. And if you look at the old map, you can see a, a green corridor stretching from India through uh, Pakistan, Iran, Turkey, all the way up to Western Europe. And it reminded me of a story that I heard from friends in Turkey that they said a few hundred years back a squirrel could travel from Ankara to Istanbul without touching the ground. And I'm imagining, you know, the squirrel could go from India to Europe without touching the ground. This is the vastness of the green corridor that was there. And it's not just a natural, you know, corridor with plants and trees and forests. It's also a, a human corridor where people would meet and they would travel and they would exchange seeds and recipes and food and music and culture. Like the gypsies who go from Rajasthan all the way to Spain. And you hear the similarity in the music still. So this for me is the Green Silk Road. It's a place of exchange and of, of growth and fertility. So we're talking about the Green Silk Road and, and reforesting the old belt between Asia and Europe. And um, often people say, but you know, humans, you know, we cannot just plant a forest. Um, humans make computers, we are good at technology, you know, so we send people to the moon or Mars. Um, we, when we, our relationship with nature is we destroy things. You know, we use wood to make ships and that's what's the end of the, of the forest. So where we are right now, what you see around is proof of the opposite. Before 40 years ago, this banyan and maybe a few around were the only trees present. The rest was barren wasteland. Yet, what we have right now is a lush, self-organizing, regenerative forest made by humans. So, if we could just reprogram ourselves and understand that we are not a destructive species, we are a creative species and we can collaborate together with nature to make more forest, it is possible to green whatever we want to green. This is the worst circumstance. If we can do it here, we can do it anywhere. So I invite all of us to plant more forest. So why do we want to co-create this green silk road? First of all, we happen to live in South India. Um, but my family, for example, is from the Netherlands. And I like to keep visiting my family. But I don't want to fly because I realized that I've already used my carbon quotum. If I calculate my carbon footprint, I see that one flight takes about the same amount of carbon as six years of the rest of my life. Um, so the best thing I can do you know, to not contribute to climate change is to stop um, flying. I already eat you know, not so much meat, I travel by cycle and, and so forth. And I think there's many more people like me. Um, both from India who want to go to Europe and from Europe who want to go to India. However, this road less traveled is not very clear. If you go to a travel agent, they don't have a flyer that says, oh, here is how you go overland through Iran and whatnot. So it's a, it's a job to create this alternative. And we don't have to do it alone. So what is the Green Silk Road? It's a, it's a collaborative platform for everybody who wants to travel overland to build this road together. The Green Silk Road is not just about doing less harm and causing less pollution, it's also about doing more good. Like we talked about reforestation, what are we contributing to this? We plan to plant more trees. And not just us, but we plan to visit schools and help them plant more trees. So kids grow up with this idea that this is something that humans do. Humans plant trees and make forests. And so we will connect schools along the way. You know, if you fly over a country, you miss an opportunity to play your role as a traveler. I see travelers as bumblebees they, that are cross-pollinating. You know, you take stories from here and bring them to there, and on your way back, you take stories from there and you bring them to there, so you create more connections. And you want to make more connections, not just with people, but also between people and their environment. 
An example of more connections between people is what we foresee is cultural events. So for example here is Omid's village in northern Iran. What if every two years there'll be a, a cultural festival? It, it's a stopover for people who are traveling. There's food, there's music, there's art. Um, and it's also a place of connectivity. So maybe we can have more such hubs of connection along the way. Again, it's an open project, so we invite anybody who lives you know, on this, on this trail, on this map, to start more festivals and connect schools with planting projects and let us know.